I'm going to show you how to create Harvey balls in PowerPoint using the Engage add-in. So first, you just want to make sure that you've got the Engage tab selected. From there, you'll want to click Infographics, and uh, you'll find Harvey balls over here. So once you select that, just click the Insert button, and you'll notice the Harvey ball table appear as long as well as this uh, window. This dialog window which lets you customize the data and um, some other visual aspects of the Harvey Ball table. So the first thing that you notice is um, the Harvey Balls uh, are represented by different icons. Uh, there are two sets of icons to choose from. Uh, you can select uh, this one which has uh, two colors uh, or you can use uh, this other set which um, uses a uh, percentage complete uh, fill to represent uh, the different um, Harvey balls. So uh, a poor value in this case would be a uh, blank circle, uh, fair would be a quarter, uh, good would be a half circle, very good three quarters, and then excellent would be a full circle. Uh, but in this case, I'll stick with the uh, default. Um, which represents uh, a full black is poor, half black is fair, uh, good is um, a blank circle, very good is half blue, and then excellent is blue with a dot uh, in the middle. Um, so Harvey balls are fantastic uh, because they let you represent data visually um, and uh, based on uh, a specific criteria. So uh, I'll get into that a bit more when I show you the underlying uh, data. Um, but if I close this for now, the first thing I'll do is I'll just uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just align this to the grid. So I'll just move this over to the left. Um, we have a smart grid system. So if you wanna see what that looks like, you simply click on the smart grid. There are 12 columns. And so when I move it to align it to the grid, I can align it to the second column, the third column, and so on. Uh, but in this case, I want to align it to the first column and uh, I'll uh, make sure the aspect ratio is clicked. And right now it's eight columns wide. I will take the entire uh, 12 columns um, just so it's a bit bigger, it's easier to see. So I'll just turn Smart Grid off. And um, so what you're looking at here is a table for um, five different companies that uh, responded to uh, an RFP process and uh, they bid, uh, these were their bid values, and um, each one has an overall score, which is based on um, these six different um, factors, and uh, this is a criteria against which they are measured, and so based on this criteria, we um, make a visual representation using Harvey Balls to show uh, which uh, company did very well um, based on that criteria, based uh, for each one of these uh, factors. So here you can see that this first company did really well in terms of price and technology and support. And uh, this other company over here, Blamo, uh, did very poorly in terms of price and um, this other factor here called uh, company. So what I'll do now is if you click on this infographic, you'll notice these two gears appear. If you click on those gears, the dialog window reopens. So the first thing I wanna do is just show you uh, the data and we'll update the data as well using uh, an embedded Excel worksheet. So every infographic here is linked to an Excel embedded worksheet, uh, which makes uh, getting the data in uh, very easy regardless of what your data source is. Um, so the setup is there are two headers. So the first header you can imagine maybe the name of the company. In the second header, you can uh, imagine maybe the name of the contact person at that company, maybe their head of um, uh, sales, uh, the key uh, person on the account. Uh, the third column is the price. So in this case, it would be um, the uh, price that the company's uh, bid uh, via this RFP. And um, column D is the uh, overall score. And this might be a function of um, these different uh, columns over here, these different criteria, including price, technology, features, and, and so on. So um, what you can do is, as uh, you've got these first four columns, and then starting uh, in column E, this is where uh, you see the Harvey balls. Um, 
it's easy to add as many rows of data as you like. Um, and it's also possible to add as many uh, columns of data starting from uh, column E. So uh, for example, if I wanted to introduce another criteria, uh, I could do that. I could just add a column here and I could call this uh, speed. And I will just randomly put in some values over here. And uh, what I can do as well is I can update my score. And my score is based on um, a score of 0 to 100, but it could be uh, anything. Uh, and in this case, I could also do a weighted average. But to uh, keep things um, simple, I'll just do a simple average across the different uh, criteria here. And I'll just drag my formula down. The other thing I should mention is whatever formatting that you have over here um, will appear in the um, infographic table over here. Uh, so if I were to format this as a dollar value, that's what would appear over here as a dollar value. Uh, in this case, I don't want a dollar value. Uh, I just want a number. So uh, in no decimal places. So I'll do that. I'll update this. And um, just to make sure, I'll just add this round function around my formula. And uh, I'll just make sure that there's no um, decimal places. So I'll just um, drag down my formula. And uh, like I mentioned, um, what you might do is, uh, based on your overall score and uh, formula, you might have uh, a different weight for each one of these uh, specific uh, factors. Uh, but for this example, I'll leave this as is. And I don't need to save the file because um, PowerPoint will automatically do that for me since it'll embed the Excel worksheet right into uh, my presentation file. So once I finish making those changes, I just click on uh, the close button and you see it's automatically recalculated. And so what you see here is um, for Acme widget, the overall score got a bump up uh, because uh, speed here was a um, contributing factor. Whereas for Stark, um, it pushed the uh, overall score down because uh, the speed uh, uh, rated very poorly. And you can visually see this with the Harvey balls. Um, so a couple other options. Uh, the first is uh, starting at the bottom, we can change the color of the Harvey balls. We can change them to green if we wish. Uh, I'll go back to blue. Um, and uh, going our way back to the top, the first option is um, we can show the borders or not show the borders. I can change the border color if I wish, um, depending if I want to match the background color of the slide. In this case, my background color is white, so I'll just keep my border color white. Uh, I can change the uh, column header title. So from companies, I can change this to super companies if I wanted to. Um, I can uh, decide to show or not show the price column. So in this case, I will show the price column. And instead of RFP cost, maybe I will put IRFP bid uh, instead of RFP price. Um, so I'll do that. Um, and then in terms of the overall score, again, I can choose not to show the overall score if I just want to show how each company did and I want my audience to um, focus on the Harvey balls and the different categories, um, I can do that. Uh, in this case, I will show the overall score and I can change the color of the overall score as well. Uh, in terms of row options, I can change the height of um, each row and I can also change the uh, padding. So if I want to add uh, a bit more space in between each row, I can do that. Um, I can also change the uh, row colors and the color that they alternate. So if I uncheck this, they'll all be the same color, but I think it's easier to read uh, with this alternate row color pattern. And of course I can change the colors for those um, alternating row colors. Uh, finally, the header background, the background color, I can change it from this dark blue to um, the blue that matches my Harvey ball. And then the font color, I can also change that, but in this case, I'll just leave it uh, as is. And so I'll close this. And that's uh, the Harvey ball table.